a lot going on, guys. I mean, when you're talking about what goes on in any kind of circuit, there is the idea of if, if it's an AC circuit, alternating current, you guys, occurs when you've got a generator, for example. Now, remember what we said, there's some pretty, in the handout that I gave to you guys, that I emailed to everybody, when I solved some interesting situation, at least one interesting situation, I think we, we expanded it a little bit, but at least there was one interesting situation for which I solved when I, let, when I said to you, how does Lenz's law work? And when a generator is spinning around, has something, has, there's, there's, there, it's got its wires, they're all wound up, and let's say there's 100 turns of wire, and they're spinning around, uh, initially perpendicular to the magnetic field hitting them, and they're spinning around, their area is getting, their effective area is getting smaller than bigger, then smaller than bigger, and it's spinning around. And <clears throat> what's going on is, there's an induced EMF, which means there's an induced current, and as this thing spin around, spins around, the induced EMF reverses polarity in a sense, and then reverses back, and then reverses back again, and then reverses back again. So the current goes back and forth associated with Lenz's law. Associated with Lenz's law, and that's how you make an AC generator. Taking advantage of Lenz's law when something's spinning around like that. It does not matter how the change in flux is occurring. If it is occurring in the exact same way in one situation, and also exert, if, if in two entirely different situations, the magnetic flux is changing at the exact same rate in both situations, but it's happening in a different way, it doesn't matter. It's, it's as though nature always approaches it. Nature always approaches the matter as though, uh, as though it's like some, some kind of thing spinning, and that's how its flux is changing it will somehow or another, if there's a changing flux, no matter how it's happening, nature doesn't know the difference and things behave the same way. Uh, the, 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 the electromotive force, the induced potential difference, which is a better way to put it, the induced potential difference, the induced potential difference E will be the same in every single situation as long as the flux is changing in the exact same way. It doesn't matter whether it's something that's spinning or, or, or whether something else is going on. The B field can be the same and the area can be changing, or the area can be the same and the B field can be changing. As long as the magnetic flux is identical in all circumstances, then the change in potential is identical in all those circumstances as well. Nature, that's weird how nature works. It doesn't matter how it's done as long as the same exact circumstances are arising regarding flux and how flux is changing, whether something's spinning or standing still or moving towards something or moving away, spinning, not spinning, standing still, but the area is getting big, doesn't matter. If the flux is changing in a particular way, the change in potential difference, the induced potential difference will be identical. Very interesting. So, AC current goes back and forth, no matter how they make it happen. There is this thing called the impedance, um, the, the reactance rep, for now. There's the capacitive reactance, which is 1 over omega times C, and there is the inductive reactance, which is omega times L. Omega is 2 pi times the frequency at, with which the current is actually changing. Radius is radius. Uh, there is a lot that can be said here. Uh, I don't know that I want to go there right now. I will say this much. The entire impedance in a situation like this is the quantity XL minus XC. doesn't matter which one you can do first in the subtraction because you're squaring them in the end anyway. And this is our square. The square. The square root of this quantity will give you the entire impedance of the RCL circuit, of the resistance, capacitor, and inductive circuit. This is pretty fascinating stuff, you guys, uh, in its own right. So 
this and the units, the units of XC, the units of XL, and the units of R are all, are all the same. They are ohms. This is ohms right here. Um, pretty crazy how that works as well. When they talk about the maximum, the IRMS is the root mean square, is the average of all the squares square rooted of something, the average of all the squares then square rooted, uh, and that gives you the IRMS, and that's I max divided by the square root of two. The VRMS or ERMS or whatever you want to call it, D, D, B, delta VRMS, whatever, uh, is delta V max over the square root of two. You do stuff like that. So, and the book goes into it quite a bit. Let's get to the to the actual solution of what we want to be doing regarding this. Now we said this one was uh, topic twenty uh, topic twenty one, right, guys? Um, Topic 21, uh, problem number 12. Okay, sorry about that. So there it is. We got it right there. I said it, but I didn't write it down for you. There it is. Uh, as we look at this, how do you want you to solve this? Well, let's look at it. I mean, let's try to have some kind of. A generator delivers an AC voltage of the form uh, delta V equals 98 volts times sine 80 pi t to a capacitor. That is in radians. Make sure you have it in radians. Always assume radians unless they tell you otherwise. The maximum current in the, unless they come, you know, they usually tell you otherwise. It's pretty, pretty obvious. But when you see a pi in there, it is like guaranteed to be radians. They want you to assume it's radians for everything. Uh, the maximum current in the circuit is 0 0.50 amps. Find A, the RMS voltage of the generator, B, the frequency of the generator, C, RMS current, D, reactants, and E, value of the capacitance. So there's a lot going on here. Let's just take it, let's, let's, let's ride as far as we can on this thing. We've said a lot of stuff. We had a few things up there. Um, we remember what they mean for a generator, and they gave us some stuff anyway. Delta small v, they call it, which is, I wish they'd call it delta capital V, or just call it capital V or E or something. I'm not thrilled by it, but let's, you know, that's what they're doing. Let's speak their language. 98 sine. So what we have is, I've already talked about this over there just recently, and now we're going to go for it. Uh, you got this. Let's see what we got here. We got Vmax divided by the square root of 2 equals VRMS. So good enough. I mean, that's that's the same as if you just if you take. They were saying 98 was the max, you guys. So what do we got here for this right here? You're going to say 98 divided by the square root of two, and it's coming out. It's going to it's going to come out the VRMS root mean squared, and that's the average voltage in magnitude that this generator is putting forth. Now it's going back and forth, so that's that's its own story. But we got this. That's A. B, they're asking for frequency. I'll tell you what, if they're asking for frequency, let's go up here. It looks a lot like, you know, remember this is this is omega. This right here is omega. Sign of, you know, sine of omega t. So we can look at it and say omega equals 2 pi f equals 8 pi, equals 80 pi. Well, that's omega. Divide by 2 pi on each side. Divide by 2 pi on each side, you got 40 hertz. 40 cycles per second. That's omega, and this is f. Not bad. What's the IRMS? Well, let's keep playing the game, guys.
IRMS, IMAX, and let's see what we got here. Uh, the IMAX is 0.5. He told us that. Divide by square root of 2. There it is. You're trying to do that. D. Um, I guess there's a lot you can say here. Uh, we'll, we'll put it this way. It's in, it's in series. They didn't talk about, there's, you know, I, I know I threw a whole bunch of stuff over there. We're not going to need it. I mean, at least now we're not going to need it. But this is the reality here. Here we're just putting a situation. They didn't even tell us about a resistor. So there's no resistor there. There's just a capacitor. So I guess I'll just deal with that throughout the whole problem. Uh, if that's the case, come over here then. And we'll talk about, so we got 12 A, B, C so far. 12 D, they're saying D, C, D, V, C max is I max X, C. The only thing that's there is the capacitor. And at its, at its maximum, it's going to be fully charged up. Uh, potentially, that's not necessarily the case. But let's, let's see where, where they put it here. DVC max equals I max XC. That is the change. This looks a lot like I times R for V. Whoever takes the role of R, you can kind of contribute it that way. There's other considerations that come into play. If you get the whole, the whole Z thing, you got this. Z looks like R, XC looks like R, XL looks like R, and R, of course, is R. But they all kind of have that same behavior, so you can, you can get voltages through use of these equations if you do it correctly. Well, let's see what they're trying to say here. What's the maximum potential difference you could possibly have? Well, the maximum this thing could actually do is, I guess, just have all the current go through it. And with XC there, I guess that, that'd be it. If you got where well, the maximum current's going through, that's going to be the maximum potential difference uh, that, that could occur. So let's see what we got here. The, the, the look here is, uh, I mean, there's a lot you can say. So I mean, there's, but unfortunately, I can't say a lot right now. I don't have the time to do it. But let's, let's talk at this level that we're talking about it. We said XC is dv c max, the, potent, the maximum potential difference divided by xc, just leave, uh, divided by c rather, uh, I'm sorry, divided by i max rather. So that's, that's what we're looking at. Um, maximum current is the maximum potential difference that could conceivably go through there. How that would get discussed is, is its own story, but let's talk. I mean, we got xc here. The most you're going to have is 98. Uh, they're telling us 98 is the, the way it can actually go. And so let's see how they actually said that. Actually, just kind of go back a little bit here if you don't mind. Uh, generally, AC can only throw this much to a capacitor. So, okay, yeah, I mean, we could, the capacitor could have, you know, if dB, if it's going to a capacitor, you guys, 98 would be the biggest. Uh, the, the sine 80 pi t could be 1 as the biggest number possible. The dB would be, the delta, the delta V would be the delta VC that could possibly be there. So it's delivering this much. Uh, generator delivers an AC voltage of the form of this much to a capacitor. Let's see what we got here. The reactants and the value of the capacitance. So uh, first things first, I guess. Here's the reactants. And they're telling us 0.5. Excuse me, it should be the omega rather, sorry. 196 omega. E. Well, yeah, remember this now, guys. XC is 1 over omega C 
Multiply by C on each side and divide by XC. What do we got? Omega, we said, was 80 pi. Remember, F was, F was 40. 2 times pi times 40 is 80 pi. This is 196 ohms. This is what you're solving. So that's pretty crazy. I mean, you're basically the, the, the most potential difference they could possibly have would be this. Uh, there's the capacitance for you to actually make that happen. Work this thing out, you get 20.3 microfarads. So, going to run out of room here, guys. Three times 10 to the negative 6, that's microfarads. So there's your answer right there. And again, it's delivering to the capacitor. There's no other intermediary there. So the maximum capacitance uh, that could make that happen, if you're going to, you, there's, there's a lot here that they say, um, let me not go there right now. I guess I, I guess maybe the better way to go. but. Uh, they, we're saying that it potentially there could be this great of a there, this great of a potential difference given what's going on with this thing. Well, if that's the case, uh, there's got to be a reactance that would actually make that happen, and that's from there that you actually find the reactance that'll get you there. That'll actually make it so that generator can actually give it the maximum potential difference across the, the capacitor plates. Maximum potential difference across the capacitor plates given the omega that they gave us way over there to the left. Uh, the maximum, the, the inductance that'll, that'll allow that to happen, given the omega that was given to us, given the I that was given to us, and given the fact that we're saying, can this thing actually become, you know, the maximum? Um, the maximum value 98, it can, yeah, but it, it'll have to be under these circumstances, given the omega and given the V that's, that's taken that's the case, what well, capacitance would actually do that, given the circumstances. So, all right, not bad, not too bad at all, you guys. Uh, 41 and so let's see what. No, I'm sorry, forgive me. Uh, that was 12. Let's do 18. Eighteen, a sinusoidal voltage, delta V equals 80 volts times the sine of 150T is applied to a series RLC circuit with L equals 80 millifarads, C equals 125 microfarads, and R equals 40 ohms. A and B. A, what is the impedance of the circuit? That's everybody. The impedance of the circuit, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be that. What is the impedance of the circuit you're looking at? Um, What is the maximum current in the circuit? Well, there we're gonna, you know, we're gonna look look at some of what's going on there, and I think we should be okay. All right. All right, guys. Uh, hello again. Uh, let's take a look at problem 18. Let me erase a couple things and uh, talk a little bit. So. Topic. Now we did 12. Let's do 18. Well, they're saying a bunch of stuff here for 18. They're saying, okay, let's just look at it one more time on that. A sinusoidal voltage of delta V equals 80 volts sine of the quantity 150T is applied to an RLC circuit with L equals 80 millihenries, C equals 125 microfarads, and R equals 40 ohms. A, what is the impedance of the circuit? 
be what is the maximum current in the circuit. Okay, the impedance. Let's say a couple things here, guys. A lot has already been said, but let's. You got that right there. I think we start there. Let me raise this. Um, we kind of take it from there, guys. They're telling us that L is 80 millihenries is 80 times 10 to the negative 3 henries C is 125 microfarads Uh, and R is this. Guys, it's all here. We got to get it to there. To do that, we got to take what they gave us. XC is going to be equal to all of this. And XL is going to be equal to all of that evaluated. So that's that's about where we're going to go here with this thing. Well, XL is omega L, XL is 2 pi F times L, XC is 1 over omega C, which is 1 over Two pi f c. These guys will get you there. Let's plug in. See what we can do here. If someone throw in whatever we can throw in there, guys. Um, they're giving us a lot of stuff, so we can see what we're going to do. Uh, let me see. I kind of they want to say they want to say I, I shortchanged the thing, but we got we're we're saying we're here. This is. This is really what's going to get you. There. That's what's going to get you there. And how how is that going to get you there? Well, it's going to get you there by doing this. I mean, you're saying z equals the square root of. Let me just put you know you can put wherever you want first. I mean, I, I kind of rewrote I wrote it a little different way. I put the xl and the xc's on the tail end of this thing. That don't matter a whole lot. That don't matter. Um, so we got this. Um, that's forty. Two pi F L, that's omega L. Omega L is the XL, and one over two pi F C. And they, you know, they did a little more here. And you can say, as we associate the whole thing as we should. Um, I mean, at the end, all this stuff, guys, we had at some point, we had, well, okay, here's where you got to be careful. Uh, they, the, the formula they gave us and the way that they had given it, let's, let's kind of go over here. Remember, the initial situation that they had, and I wrote it a little differently, is Delta V, I'm going to call it V. Delta V, I'm going to call it V. Delta V max, I'm going to call it just V max. And it's sine 150 T. The assumption is always that you're using, assumption in, the, in, this, in, in these books is always that you're using radians. This is the 2 pi, this is the 2 pi F, you guys. This is 2 pi F. Remember, omega is 150. Uh, omega is 2 pi f. So 2 pi f equals the 150. So you're not really in a bad place. Just put 150 in for 2 pi f. And just follow the line here. Go all the way across like that. So what you got here is uh, you got the 40 squared. Plus, and you got the one, it's 150 times L, 
minus uh, 1 over 150 times C. So, I mean, a little bit of a mess. Now you plug in what L is. We did this in the beginning now, guys. We had, we had this whole thing that gave us, just got to make sure you're writing down everything that you need to write down. There it is. Um, plug in the L value that they gave you. Plug in the L value that they gave you. Plug in the C value that they gave you. And, uh, and you got it. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out square root of 40 squared plus what we get. Well, this guy's going to come out to 12 at the end of the day. This 150 times L is 12. This 1 over 150 C is going to be 53.33. And There it is, that's Z. Z's gonna be, and I maybe make it a little more clear, guys. I mean, indeed, that is Z. Z is that. Uh, and it's in ohms, that's what you got. As far as the I max is concerned, what will the I max be? The I max, so that was 18A, this is 18B. It's a lot like V divided by R. This is kind of like the new R. It's just like a grand total R in a sense. I max equals V max divided by Z. Uh, the maximum, what do we got? Well, the maximum is, is 80. Remember, we're going to come right back to here. This V max they gave us, and they said this thing right here was 80. The V max was 80. So, and then the, the Z we just calculated. So this is 80, this is the Z, I max is one point Three nine amps, and that's B. Okay, uh, that got us through a little bit, kind of makeshift, not that great, but man, it's better than nothing, I guess, guys. We we really we're really pressed for time. Now, but if if they let us do this tomorrow, I'm gonna try to do this tomorrow as well. You know, we're 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 a little apprehensive about how the whole how the whole thing ends. You know, so um, topic 20, 41, and 50, we did. Topic 21, uh, topic 20, problems 41 and 50 we did. Topic 21, problems 12 and 18 we just did. Let's do topic 22, uh, just one problem from topic 22, problem number 21. And let's see what we can do on that. And then I'll try to finish the last nine tomorrow if we can do this. You know, if not, look at them, you got them, I, I wrote them down for you. You've got them. Uh, you have them in your notes. All of this stuff is in your notes, you guys. You can always you can study the notes and, and take it from there. Uh, let's see what we got there, guys. Uh, 